If you find yourself that you're interested in a particular area of research, I would be delighted if you would be interested in doing research to prevent mother-to-child transmission of HIV, but regardless of the area of research, um, you know, what you want to do, the way you plan out your steps, your strategy is to find an expert in that field that can teach you what they know, okay? So when I went to get my PhD, I knew I wanted to do research in HIV. And you don't always know exactly what kind of research you want to do when you start, uh, but I knew I wanted to be in HIV and um, by talking to experts that did research in the field, I, I was able to identify the area within HIV, because usually the areas are very broad, and so you need to find where do you want to focus yourself on for the next four or five years, which is how long it'll take you to get to take a PhD home. So um, I found a wonderful advisor. Her name was Mary Kay Howitt, and she, um, she taught me what she learned. She talked to me, you know, this is what I'm doing. I discovered that an ingredient in toothpaste can kill HIV. And, you know, that's what sparked my interest. I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. I think this is the area of HIV where I wanna, where I wanna be in. And so you work with experts to develop the research project. And then you, with your own hands, then build it up into what could potentially become a solution in the future. So nowadays, with the internet available, you know, it's so easy to find who does what in the world. Um, so if you're interested in a particular area of research, you just say, well, let me find, um, let me do a search on the internet, HIV and breastfeeding prevention. A lot of sites will come up. Maybe you want to narrow down your search. Well, HIV prevention research, you know, and that's how you start finding who's doing what in the field. So oftentimes, um, once you go into high school or you're in college and you want to do a summer research rotation, that's a good way of finding the spot where you want to spend that summer by doing something productive uh, that's going to reap a lot of rewards for yourself, but it's also going to help advance a cause. And the good thing is that whenever you do research in an academic research lab, you'll get credit for it forever. Because one thing, when you do research, you have to publish it, because otherwise nobody's going to know what you discovered. And if you did that if you contributed in any way to research, even if you were just in high school at that time, or you were just a summer college student that wanted to do something different during the summer, but you contributed with some research data that turned into a publication, your name is listed as one of the authors forever. And that's a credit to you. That, that, that paper couldn't have ever been published without your contribution because you helped to make it a reality. And that's how people know, hey, look at this new discovery. Let's see how we develop this into a solution. Or let's see what's the next step in this research process. So I strongly encourage, uh, if you, encourage you if you have an interest in, in research or, or science, you know, it's never too early. Go on the internet, find a laboratory where they're doing something that interests you and spend a day and who knows, maybe you'll come back and spend a whole summer next time. And eventually, if it's really good and you have a really good relationship with them, you might be coming back and getting a PhD out of that lab.